Hello everybody and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome to part one of my T-Rex tutorial. Keep on watching if you want to learn how to do this look. So there's a few supplies you're going to need. I'm starting with a face cast, which is a bit of a necessity, but I'm sure you could do with that. Some mixing palettes and bowls. A variety of sponges, makeup brushes, and also various other tools like spatulas. You are also going to need some petroleum jelly. It doesn't have to be any specific brand. This is just a nose brand, nose brand, <laughs> no brand Coles one. Also going to need some liquid latex. I've got two different types and also some cotton balls, a hell of a lot of cotton balls and also some translucent powder. And that's it for this part of the video. So first thing I'm doing is applying petroleum jelly all over and I'm saying all over all in the nooks and crannies of my face cast and I've got a little reference picture of um, what I want to do because um, for this T-Rex it's a very complicated look um, and so it's good to keep going back and forth to your reference picture to kind of see if you're on track if you're heading where you need to be heading and so on as you can see here I'm just taking liquid latex and um, and cotton and I'm taking the uh, flesh tone latex first because I would prefer that to be underneath and then taking the white latex um, afterwards so that'll be my top layer so what I'm trying to do here is um, basically conceal the fact that my nose is just something that sticks out of my face singularly by itself and you want to create um, the effect of kind of like a muzzle I guess muzzle is that a, is that a word I'm not sure um, create like a um, beak almost um, so I'm building up all um, beside yeah, beside my nose um, on either side it also um, like on my cheeks and um, cheekbones and underneath my nose too because I want it to just be one uh, big bulbous prominent feature not just like a little tiny nose sticking out the middle because we are going for a t-rex or a dinosaur lizard anything of the sorts so um, to do that I'm just literally it's a very very easy process just literally build up how many times can I say literally build up the cotton and latex in layers so start with latex add cotton on top go with more latex um, more cotton again it's a very very repetitive process and it's super super easy to do um, you could if you don't have a face mask a face mask a face cast you could apply this right onto your face it would be a lot more challenging because you wouldn't be able to see um, like around the edges of um, your face because when it gets to sculpting the brow part um, it is quite prominent which means that um, it blocks a lot of your peripheral vision so that is something to be aware of if you are going to put this right onto your face but it is doable um, as you can see I am using my finger to apply the latex you could also use a spatula I started off with using the spatula but then it's just way quicker I found for me to just use um, my finger when applying it and then um, for like kind of the final layers using the spatula to really smooth out that top layer of latex but each their own, um, feel free to use a sponge if you don't want your fingers in cotton and latex. It's really just all personal preference. Um, but uh, yeah, I just prefer to use my fingers. I found it much, much easier. As you can see, I'm still building up that shape because ultimately I want to have it in two sections so I want there to be the top half of the face and also the bottom half of the face so um, I've switched latex now because we're starting to get closer to the top layer so I want to make sure that all that flesh tone um, is concealed and um, I'm kind of unrolling the uh, balls of cotton and applying them like that so not so much that it's all bunched up um, but it's just kind of in long strips which I found um, much easier to work with when it gets to this stage and again I did want to make it in two separate parts so to have the top half and the bottom half um, that way I could articulate so like move my mouth I can eat and drink and do all that fun stuff that's kind of a necessity um, 
so yeah, just keep watching and I'll show you um, further along in the process um, how I uh, achieved that with making the two separate halves. What I'm doing here is just creating the uh, bottom of the top lip um, and I made it in line with my top lip as well so um, that would help conceal like half of my mouth essentially. Now what I'm doing is just taking the liquid latex and the cotton um, and I'm taking that over the bridge of the nose and starting sculpting up that area. And just like that, I am doing the same process as before. Cotton, latex, latex, cotton, and just continuing the process and really building up that bridge. So now that I'm kind of getting the shape that I want, um, we are heading in a good direction, I think. So I'm just um, blending out those sides towards the eyes and um, using the latex and cotton to do so. Then around, like, I guess the cheekbone area um, and underneath the eye socket, I'm just building that up uh, to create um, more of a seamless edge and this will really define, um, further define the, um, the cheekbones because I wanted um, them to have that very, like, angular um, sort of thing going on, like, um, uh, like dinosaurs do. And it's really helpful to look at a picture of um, dinosaurs when doing so, whether it's like one from Jurassic Park or even like a cartoon of one, um, or just like a realistic interpretation kind of thing of a dinosaur. Um, I found that super helpful and I just kind of look through different pictures, ones with their mouth open, mouth closed, and all that sort of good stuff. As you can see here, I'm building up the brow area, so I'm just taking more cotton from the bridge of the nose and taking that further out. As you can see, it's starting to um, really get that um, like animal kind of shape to it now. And um, I just literally just kept building up the layers until I was happy with it, creating um, ridges and a bit more texture where I felt like it needed it. Um, and yeah, just kept going back and forth. As you can see, I've zoomed in a little bit more, I think. Just come up a little bit more close and personal. Um, and I'm just, again, blending um, that kind of out into the uh, face cast so it'll have less of an edge when it comes to um, actually applying it to the face. Also, <clears throat> as you can see, this is uh, where I got up to. Um, and by this point, I was super happy with how the shape was turning out. So I wanted to move on um, to the bottom half of the face. As you can see, I just trimmed off the excess on the bottom half, um, which will help with creating um, the two separate pieces of the prosthetic so um, I can actually articulate. So when I open my mouth, um, the bottom jaw will also move. Um, and I am not taking this directly onto my bottom lip because I want the mouth to be um, open um, a little bit and to have like all those teeth showing and all that sort of stuff. So um, that's um, what I did. As you can see, I'm just taking latex and cotton and same thing as before, unrolling it, taking my sponge, taking my fingers and um, just really blending everything out into the prosthetic and again just building everything up because ultimately you do not want to have human like features because we ain't going on for human, you know what I'm saying? The process is very very repetitive, it's literally just building up and smoothing, building and smoothing, going back and forth between products. As you can see, I've skipped forward a little bit because it's a very, very repetitive process and I feel like you get the gist of it by now. Um, and I'm just kind of creating that um, upper lip and um, lower lip as well, really defining the two separations and creating that ridge. Um, and <clears throat> Uh, as you can see, that's it all blended out, and what I'm doing now is just taking my spatula to really smooth over everything. I decided to add a bit more um, cotton and latex because I wanted to build it up a bit more, and literally just keep um, like flipping it to the side, looking at the profile, looking at it from all different angles and all that sort of stuff, and um, just see where it needs a little something extra, 
and I'm um, just building it up. I also added some nostrils, which ended up being super crooked, but um, you know, dinosaurs have nostrils. They've got to breathe somehow other than their mouth. Um, but yeah, so now I'm moving on to making the teeth. Um, I'm using um, acrylic like for uh, nails and um, you could use polymorph plastic or anything of the sorts. Um, I didn't have any polymorph plastic at the time so I just used what I, um, what I had, my resources. You could also use a hot glue gun and literally just like squeeze out the different shapes and everything. Um, but what I did is I obviously laid down some alfoil to pre protect my surface because um, acetone will eat through just about anything except for like metals um, as a majority. Um, so obviously I'm just protecting my surface and I've taken um, some white acrylic powder and also the acrylic liquid and I'm um, just created all these little teeth shapes or different sizes some bigger some smaller because I did want to have that variety throughout the mouth and um, yeah so as you can see this is kind of the final sort of thing we've got going on there once they were all firm and set up, I knew it was time that I could move on to the colouring process, which is super exciting. When it comes to colouring, you're going to need a few different things. First, I took a different, a few different nail polish colours. I got black and yellow and also some Ben Nye Zombie Tooth Enamel. I also used some isopropyl alcohol or 99% alcohol, some acetone, this is just pure old acetone, um, various face paints like pink, red, uh, sorry, white, red and black, some water, I've got mine in a spray bottle for convenience, also some eyeshadows that you don't care a whole lot about because they might get destroyed, a hot glue gun. And that is it. So first, first, first what I'm doing is taking my tooth and my zombie tooth enamel um, on just at dabbing a little bit onto all of the teeth because I want them to have that kind of rotting sort of thing going on because I don't think dinosaurs brush their teeth, especially T-Rexes. I don't think their arms are long enough to be able to do that. But um, yeah, so what I did is I took the um, enamel and diluted, <clears throat> diluted it with some alcohol on my brush. And then took my uh, two different nail polish colours to um, create the dirty sort of effect um, on the teeth to add a bit more definition, make some more yellow, some more black, and so on and so forth until I was happy with um, the final result. And then I just went back in with my acetone and um, alcohol to, you know, make the colours um, what, they, what I wanted them to. So for removing the prosthetic, you want to take a powder brush and a bunch of translucent powder. It, a loose powder works the best for this. You could try with just a pressed powder, but a loose powder definitely works best. And literally just cake it on all over the prosthetic and start lifting up one edge and powdering underneath as you go because it will be tacky underneath because um, latex just doesn't really, um, it doesn't set dry. Um, so once you've got your two different parts and they're all set, then you can move on to colouring everything. I took white face paint and red face paint and also I scraped out a little bit of yellow face paint to get um, just the kind of tone that I was looking for because you don't want it to be just like rose pink or anything like that. It needs to be a bit more yellow and gummy looking. Um, I think if I were to do this again, I would maybe change the colour up a little bit more, maybe add more yellow because it was just a little too pink for my liking. And I also um, added more shading with like different eyeshadow colours and also more black and um, red face paint. Now as you can see I'm starting with gluing in all the teeth for the, um, the, the teeth <laughs> and I'm taking my hot glue gun and um, squirting like a little bit of a, um, a dollop of the hot glue in there and just pushing the teeth right in. You kind of want to stagger the teeth but don't kind of like sharky layer them up because um, dinosaurs teeth they're not like very sharky. They're, they're um, just def they definitely don't have uh, braces but um, 
they're a little more um, in line than what a shark would be. So just really stagger them in, load up their mouth with teeth because those things have got a lot of teeth. And that is that for this half of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you go check out part two um, to see how I created the actual final makeup look. Thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next video.